a revolution rages outside, tearing down kings and rewriting the future. But inside this small Parisian home, another kind of revolution is taking shape, one that no one will witness, no one will celebrate and no one will allow. A girl, barely 13, traces her fingers over the pages of a calculus book, her breath quickening. It is a crime. It is impossible, but she cannot stop. Her father snatches the book from her hands and says, Enough of this nonsense, Sophie. Mathematics is no subject for a girl. In a world where knowledge is power, Sophie Germain was never meant to hold it. But she would not, could not be stopped, even if it meant deception, secrecy, and a name that was not her own. Her mind was sharper than any blade, but the world only listened to men, so Sophie Germain became Monsieur Leblanc. And with this name, she would shake the very foundations of mathematics. April 1st, 1776. As thunder crashes over Paris, a child is born into a world on the brink of transformation. Her name is Marie-Sophie Germain. She will never take up arms, never march in the streets, but she will shake the foundations of knowledge itself. By the time Sophie is a teenager, the monarchy has fallen and France is in turmoil. But while revolutionaries rewrite the laws of society, Sophie's mind is drawn to a different kind of power, the laws of the universe. Archimedes, a man so lost in numbers that he never heard the soldier behind him. His mind was so brilliant, they killed him out of fear. Sophie is transfixed. If numbers could hold such power, she would master them no matter the cost. At the family dinner table, Sophie's father, Ambroise Germain, sternly watches as she scribbles mathematical equations on a napkin and then says, Sophie, enough of this nonsense. A woman does not study mathematics. It is unnatural. Her mother adds, you will ruin your chances of marriage. But Sophie refuses to yield. While revolutionaries burn books in the streets, she devours them in secret. Mathematics is forbidden to her, but she will not be denied. For years, she fights in silence, defying both family and society. When they take away her books, she memorizes. When they take away her light, she studies in the dark. Her mind refuses to be caged, and soon it will break free. In the shadows of Paris, where the echoes of revolution linger, Sophie Germain takes a bold step into a world that seeks to silence her. With every stroke of her quill, she creates a new identity. Monsieur Leblanc, a name that will carry her thoughts beyond the walls that confine her. As the letter reaches Joseph Louis Lagrange, one of the most esteemed mathematicians of the age, Sophie's words ignite curiosity. She has crafted solutions to problems that have perplexed many, yet she remains hidden behind a facade. Lagrange was deeply impressed by the quality of her work and requested to meet Leblanc. At this point, Germain had no choice but to reveal her true identity. Lagrange's initial shock gives way to admiration as he recognizes the brilliance of the mind behind the name. In a rare moment of history, one of the greatest minds of the era acknowledges another transcending the barriers of gender and societal expectations. But Sophie is acutely aware of the risks she faces. With every correspondence, she must guard her identity, walking the fine line between genius and anonymity. With Lagrange's encouragement, Sophie extends her reach across borders. She pens a letter to Carl Friedrich Gauss, a mathematician whose reputation is unmatched. As he reads her thoughts on number theory, he is captivated, unaware that he is corresponding with a woman. Sophie dives deeper into the realm of numbers, formulating a theorem that will challenge the great Fermat's last theorem. She identifies a class of prime numbers now known as Sophie Germain primes, and in doing so, she makes a groundbreaking contribution to number theory. As the Napoleonic Wars sweep across Europe, Sophie's world becomes perilous. Aware of Gauss's predicament, she risks everything to protect him, contacting a French general in a bold act of camaraderie. This act of bravery reveals her true character, a woman of intellect and conviction. When Gauss learns that Monsieur Leblanc is not a man but Sophie Germain, 
his shock is replaced by profound respect. In a time when women were seldom recognized for their contributions, Gauss's words carry weight. He celebrates her intellect and encourages her to continue her mathematical pursuits. In that moment, Sophie understands the power of her work. She is no longer just a name hidden in the shadows. She is a force in the mathematical world. Mathematics is no longer just a pursuit, it is an obsession. Sophie Germain's mind is consumed by patterns, by the hidden structure within numbers, and at the heart of it all lies her greatest battle, Fermat's last theorem. Sophie finds a way forward. She identifies a special class of prime numbers, those for which 2p plus 1 is also prime. These will one day be called Sophie Germain primes. But her real breakthrough is something even greater, after years of working in number theory, Sophie faces a new challenge. The Paris Academy of Sciences announces a competition, Solve the Complex Problem of Elasticity, the way materials bend, stretch and vibrate. It is one of the most difficult problems in physics, and only the greatest minds attempt it. Twice she submits her work, twice she is dismissed. But failure is only a step toward truth. On her third attempt, in 1816, the judges cannot deny it, Sophie Germain has cracked the problem of elasticity. She becomes the first woman to win the Academy's grand prize in mathematics. But despite her achievements, the doors of academic institutions remain closed. She is not permitted to attend lectures, not allowed to teach. She has solved problems that baffled men for centuries, yet she remains invisible. Though her groundbreaking work on elasticity had earned her the grand prize from the Academy of Sciences, Sophie Germain's world remained closed to the salons and societies of her male peers. Still, she persisted, curious, reflective and quietly revolutionary. She continued to correspond with the few minds who truly respected her, among them Carl Friedrich Gauss. Though distance and silence sometimes fell between their letters, Sophie's words still carried the weight of brilliance. In her later years, Sophie turned inward, grappling with questions of the mind, the spirit and the unity of knowledge. She dreamed of a science that could explain not just the laws of matter, but the laws of thought itself. Though the world saw only a reclusive mathematician, those closest to her saw a different light. To her young niece, she was not only a scholar, but a spark. Illness came slowly, painfully. Yet even as her body grew weak, her mind never did. She filled pages with thoughts, some never read, some never finished. She passed away in 1831 at the age of 55. It was only after her death that her peers began to speak her name with the weight it deserved. Joseph Fourier called her work truly original. The world had finally begun to listen. Sophie Germain spent a lifetime thinking in a world that tried to quiet her, but her mind endured, bold, curious and never silent. In 2003, the French Academy of Sciences established the Sophie Germain Prize. Awarded annually, it honors significant contributions to mathematics, particularly in pure and applied fields. This prize not only acknowledges excellence, but also symbolizes a long overdue recognition of Sophie Germain's impact, more than 170 years after her death. Tucked into the heart of Paris, not far from where she once lived, is Rue Sophie Germain. More than a tribute, the street is a reminder, woven into the daily life of the city she called home, of a woman who reshaped mathematics from the margins. In number theory, Sophie Germain's work on primes still echoes today. Sophie Germain primes, a class of prime numbers she studied in the pursuit of Fermat's last theorem, remain an active field of research. These primes now bear her name, a rare and lasting mathematical honor. Beyond formulas and theorems, Sophie Germain's greatest legacy may be symbolic, a woman who studied in secret, published under a pseudonym, and broke into an academic world that tried to exclude her. 
Today, her name inspires a new generation of thinkers, reminding them that brilliance knows no boundary of gender and that passion can outlast silence. Mathematics is eternal. The names behind its discoveries are not always remembered, but their work is. Every time an engineer calculates the stress on a bridge, every time a mathematician studies Fermat's last theorem, Sophie Germain is there. She was denied entry into the halls of academia, but today she stands at the foundation of mathematics. Sophie Germain is no longer just a name. She is a theorem, a prize, a concept that continues to shape the world.